This is for Susan Johnson, and I'm going to do Blackfish. Um, this is the only way I can film, so I'm sorry. Um, let me see. Um, this is the only way I can film right now because my cell phone died recently. And this device, um, it has the, I'm sure it has the black bars on the side. If I try to do it the other way, I don't know where to look and I look like I'm staring sideways or something. Anyway, and my arms are weak, so I can't really hold the camera steady. So I hope you don't mind just me doing this. Anyway, Blackfish. 2013, a movie that is skillfully produced and woven together, um, court transcripts, interviews, archival footage. This is the first real documentary with no actors that I've done. Um, this is not a docudrama, this is an actual documentary. Expert testimony, um, whale experts, ex-trainers from SeaWorld that are no longer working there and are totally against SeaWorld now, and I applaud them. Um, they, they admit that they were only young kids when they were hired on there, and, you know, I hope none of them feel bad or guilty. I really do, because you live and you learn. You know, you see something cool on TV, you go to a show, your parents take you to a place and you're inspired and you really, it is a, a, a let's just face it, SeaWorld's genius, it's genius marketing. They make it look like, they make it look so, so much like a happy, beautiful place. And the whales are trained to act happy and like circus animals. I noticed the one scene where the whale was all cut up on its bottom belly area. They were playing this song, you know, really a beautiful upbeat song while they were trying to get people out of there. They were saying, please, you know, use these walkways and certain footwear will cause you to slip. So please step carefully in this song and the, you know, was playing to keep the crowd, you know, from freaking out at the sight of all the blood. Um, this whale was attacked by another whale and it was bleeding. And, uh, it's just really sad. Um, but that's SeaWorld. It's a lie. It's a big corporate lie. They're a profit organization. And As long as they exist, that's all they'll ever be. They're not there to, there's not, it's not an edutainment thing. It's a circus. It's just a water circus. So, this story revolves around the biggest male whale they had in captivity, bull whale, Tilikum. He was captured when he was approximately two years old back in 83. And he was about nine years after his capture, he killed a young woman in Canada, drowned her, and one of the females that lived with him in Canada is known for at least three to four attacks herself. Nootka four. Her name is Nootka f number four. And um, the reason Tilikom is responsible for so many deaths rather than just attacks is because the sheer weight of him, 12,000 pounds. Very large, a lot of weight, a lot of power even if he was sick with a flopped over fin. The flopped over fin is from a lack of mobility, a lack of exercise, a lack of being able to swim in the ocean, 
swim in big straight lines for miles a day. They need their exercise and they can't get it in Sea World. So yes, he killed a young woman in Kilty Burn, uh, 19 years old, 20 years old, and the Sea World bought Tilikum from that park, Sea Land of the Pacific, in Canada, and uh, took him to Orlando, Florida. Covered up the circumstances, did not tell any of their employees about Kelty Burns' death, and. In 1999, a homeless man named Daniel Dukes is found, found flopped over Tilikum's back. Well, how can I tell if that's even Tilikum's fault, really? Because they don't have any cameras, they don't have any witnesses. Their uh, cameras weren't turned on, actually, is what I should have said, because they do have underwater and outside cameras all over that stadium, all over that area, all over the tank area. Bertilicum lived, if you can call it living, and how did this man get in there, how did he sneak past security, etc. and so on. So I don't know if I can even count this, because they say that the, the man was covered in whale bites and had his, torn, his clothes torn off and some mutilation done, and uh, at the same time, SeaWorld saying he didn't have anything wrong except he drowned because he got hypothermic. That he was probably drunk or on drugs or something. I don't know, but they did an autopsy according to some other sources and they didn't find anything So in his system. So I don't even know what to make of that death. And then the big one that launched this whole boycott Sea World thing was the death of a very experienced trainer named Don Brancho in February of 2010, 19, almost 19 years to the day of Kelty Burn, and uh, this was horrible. It wasn't just a drowning; it was an attack, a brutal attack. And just two months before that, a whale, probably one of Tilikum's children um, attacked and killed a young man in uh, the Canary Islands at a venue called Laurel Park. Uh, the man's name was Alexis Rodriguez, I believe, and uh, he was engaged to be married, and he was viciously attacked. He was rammed into the abdomen and chest, and it was just awful. His mother um, is now an anti, she's an anti, you know, she's against this whole whale's objectivity thing. And she was recently taken to Canada to see wild whales and it just made her so happy to see them. She felt very comforted and because the loss of her son was devastating to her. I don't know how much longer I can talk on this without the battery running out or the memory running out. But there, are, I just my my thing is I want to stress that Tulikum is very famous because he killed three people. Uh, but there are other ones, Nutka four, forty two. Kasatka, and Kasatka is the one you see, you'll see in the film who, excuse me, sorry about that, she um, attacked Ken Peters on 29 November 2006 and nearly drowned him.
there's been a lot of attacks near drownings um, there's been lots of incidents not just that one but where they've taken the, the trainer or whoever underwater and just held them there one trainer was held under for four minutes that's scary so um, my my whole point is these animals need to be free they need to be where they belong with their families um, they need their dignity and I really hope that if you haven't seen the movie yet I think you should anybody who still defends the world after this I think they need to Think about if they were stuck in a swimming pool all their lives and weren't allowed to go anywhere else. I think that would maybe sway them, make them think twice. Anyway, it's 10 out of 10 stars. I would talk more, but this, this camera is not going to let me.